Hey guys, it's great to see all of you today. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, this is Savvy Dirt Farmer, and I was thinking about these coral bells here that we potted in, I think, our last uh, video, and I wanted to just talk to you a little bit more today about patented plants. What in the world is a patented plant? Because both of these varieties of coral bells are patented. So today, I want to take just a few minutes and stay with me if you're really interested in learning about these patented plants, because I think I can help you understand or at least begin to understand some pretty important things about them. But um, if you're interested in learning something about patented plants and what they are and what it even means for a plant to be patented and why that might matter to you. So stay with me. We're going to go into my house and see if we can look up a few things online and help us to kind of unravel what plant patents actually are. Hey guys, welcome to my living room. I wanted to sit down with my computer and go through a few things to help you understand plant patents better and how you might learn to work through them and how to deal with them as someone who's seeking to build a nursery or someone who's just seeking information about plant patents and what what they are and how to deal with them. Uh, in my own nursery, one of the plants that I really like is a plant called Coral Bells. Botanic name is Heuchera. And one of the plants that I deal with a lot is, is the caramel uh, Coral Bell variety of those plants. And I showed you those on a previous video, but that is a patented plant. So when I'm when I'm dealing with a patented plant, uh, there's there's several things that I do. So I want to just show you this on my computer screen. And I've just Googled uh, the, the, that particular plant, caramel heuchera, and I just found this information at Bluestone Perennials. I don't even know what Bluestone Perennials is, but it, it looks to me like it's just a nursery somewhere that sells perennial plants. And you can see that they're sold out of them here, but you know that's really inconsequential because that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for information about the plant. So let's say that I don't know anything about this particular plant. I'm trying to find out information about this plant. If it's something I want to buy, if it'll fit in my space, if I think it's a good fit for my nursery, whatever it is, I'm looking at the details of the plant, the type, the height, the spacing, and so on. And I come right down here to this line and I see that it has a patent number and it says patent PP16560 and that PP just means plant patent. Sometimes if it is a patent that's under application that has maybe not yet been granted, it will say PPAF, but either way you just need to assume that it is a patented plant if you see a patent number or a PPAF. So that's just something to know. So I immediately know when I'm researching caramel coral bells, one of the first thing that I that I have found about it to take note of is that it's patented. So what does that actually even mean? Okay, I'm gonna jump over here to another uh, website to show you this. This is at uspto.gov. That's the United States Patent and Trademark Office.gov. And here on the, the front page of their website, the USPTO site, there is general information about uh, plant patents in general, and you can just scroll down what is a plant patent. Let's just look at a couple of things here, just a couple of sentences to understand. And um, a plant patent, it's granted by the United States government to an inventor or to a grower uh, who has invented or discovered and asexually reproduced a distinct and new variety of plant other than a tuber propagated plant or a plant found in an uncultivated state. The grant, which lasts for 20 years from the date of filing, that's critical to know that it lasts for 20 years from the date of filing the application. That's the, the, the duration of the patent protection. It protects the plant's patent owner's rights to exclude others from asexually reproducing the plant and from using offering for sale or selling the plant so re reproduced or any of its parts throughout the United States, etc., etc. So what we need to see is that when someone is granted a plant patent because they have discovered maybe through a chance seedling that just threw the spectacular plant or through selective hybridized breeding of various plants to create this new thing, this new plant, and a, a new and distinct species is determined to have resulted, a patent may be granted to them. It lasts, as we see here, it lasts for 20 years, and it protects that plant from being reproduced asexually. What is asexual reproduction in the plant world? It's growing a plant from cuttings. It's multiplying a plant through divisions. All of the things that growers do with their plants. So it's not legal, literally against the law for someone to purchase 
a patented plant from a nursery. If a, if a consumer goes and buys a patented plant from a nursery and it's got a tag on it that says it's patented and patented plants will always show that. If it's got a patent tag on it as, as just a an individual that's who's out buying a plant or if you're a nursery grower uh, growing these plants to, to sell them, you can't reproduce them yourself. And that's really the critical part for growers to remember. So I want to jump over here to another part of the puzzle here, and that is ordering patented plants, dealing with patented plants in your nursery. Some people want to just stay away from patented plants altogether in their nurseries, and there may be good reasons for doing that. Like a lot of people who have nurseries just want to grow everything that they sell, particularly in a backyard nursery where sometimes more of a hobby turn, money-making side thing you're doing. You may just be interested in growing your own plants or in propagating your own plants, and you can't propagate patented plants. Uh, but many nurseries are going to be buying in thousands and thousands and thousands of patented starter plants, plugs, liners, um, all of those words, and using them in their nursery. So uh, this website I'm looking at now is ecgrowers.com. It's Emerald Coast Growers. This is out of uh, somewhere, I believe, in the Florida Panhandle. It's just a really big nursery that grows lots and lots and lots of perennials. And I have looked up coral bells, caramel coral bells on their availability. And sure enough, they do have them. They don't have any available right now, but they have them on their sheet. Uh, right down here, I'll highlight this for you. It's called Hookera Caramel. And there is the plant patents number. So we know that caramel coral bells, just from seeing this on the screen, their assigned patent number by the U.S. Patent Office is 16560. Zero. Now, a couple of other things that are worth mentioning here, just that we can learn from this order form, is there is a 20 cent royalty per plant that goes to the patent holder. So if you were the person who went through the time, the effort, the expense in getting this plant patented and in developing this plant, then through Emerald Coast Growers, you are charging a 20 cent per plant royalty. So Emerald Coast, as a propagator of this plant, they can propagate this plant, but they are in agreement with the patent holder at 20 cents royalty per plant. And that is paid by the purchaser, which on our end would be the growers or the nursery owners. So when you're dealing with a, a plant patent that has not yet expired is during that 20 year period, uh, there's likely going to be a royalty attached, but that may not always be the case Look, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but this is just how you read an order form. You see that it's plant patent 16560, that there's a 20 cent per plant royalty, that a 72 count tray is $2.29 per plant here, plus 20 cent royalty, so that'd make that 249. And this column over here, which is blank, tells you that they don't have any available right now. And their next available, they'll have seven flats here that will be available on January the 17th, 2022. So currently none available. This is the price of them. This is the quantity per tray. This is the royalty per plant. Now, this is just common practice in the nursery world to deal with patented plants this way. You can buy lots of them. You can avoid them altogether, but just understand that if you're dealing with patented plants, they are a totally different game than just going and propagating off public domain hydrangeas, coral bells, whatever. See, so for example, just a couple of, well, one row above this, here's a hookera coral bell called Melting Fire. Well, that one is not patented. Also, look how much cheaper it is. It's 99 cents per plant. And kind of part of the point of patented plants is advancing kind of the overall quality and the scope of a given species of plant. So if you're a breeder and propagator of coral bells, it may be that developing patented varieties makes it so as time goes on, there's more and more and more, more spectacular varieties, more disease-free varieties. And what the plant patents do is they protect what you have created, what you have bred as a breeder of these plants. They're protecting it and the value that that creates from being ripped off by other people. So plant patents aren't a bad thing. Don't look at them as a bad thing. Just understand what you have when you're dealing with a patented plant. And 
one more thing that's worth showing to you also, and I just Googled plant patent 16560, which is the caramel coral bells, and this takes us to patents.google.com, and this is just a place where you can find any patent, but particularly plant patents. And we can see that the plant patent for the Hookara coral bells was filed on September the 7th, 2004. Well, it's 2021, so that's been about 17 years ago. So we know that this patent is only in effect for about three more years. So what does that mean for a grower? Well, it means that you might start growing some of these in the ground in your own landscape or in your own nursery yourself, because in about three years, you'll be able to start reproducing these yourselves. And the caramel coral bells is a spectacular plant. Um, it's gonna always be a popular plant, whether its patent is still in effect or not. So beginning growing them now for later production of them once the patent expires may be a good idea. And it's just kind of interesting to see how long these plants have been around as patented varieties. So looking up their application date, remember 20 years from application date, it's just kind of an interesting thing to do. So you can do this with any plant and these plants that are uh, in like the maybe 13, 14,000 range. This is this is plant plant patent 16,000, whatever it was, I forget. Uh, but the plants in the 13, 14,000 range are expiring this year. These are done in order. You know, much more recently patented plants are in the 28, 29,000, something like that. I really don't know. But those really high numbers, this can be years, 10, 15 years or more till they expire. But some of these lower numbers that are in the mid tens of thousands, like again, 13, 14, 15, they're expiring soon, which will open up a lot of plants. And it's always opening up a lot of plants, but it's opening up plants to propagators like you and me who do them on a smaller scale or who just would rather avoid the plant patent game altogether. So guys, I hope this has been helpful in some way in helping you understand just a little bit more about plant patents. I'm no expert on it. Don't delve off into this world in any uh, professional capacity at all without learning more about it. But I did want to just give you what information I have, and I hope it's helpful to you. And right here from my living room, I love all of you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're having a great day today.